Hello and welcome to Graphic Vandalism. Johnny Alpha here, and with this video I'm going to take a look at 10 graphic novels I really think are some of the best out there, and are some that I just had a total blast reading. They have really changed the way I look and perceive graphic novels. This list is in no specific order. I don't see a point in slapping a number on greatness, so rather I'll just put them in an order that keeps this list fresh, evolving, and as eclectic as possible. Okay, first up we have We Can Never Go Home, written by Matthew Rosenberg and Patrick Kinlow, with art by Josh Hood and Brian Lovell, published by Black Mask Studios. And We Can Never Go Home tells the fated tale of Madison and Duncan, who are polar opposites. Madison, who is the town sweetheart, and Duncan, who is the town misfit, become friends after learning one another have superpowers. After a bizarre turn of events, the two are forced on the run, and after going with the stupid idea of robbing drug dealers to stay afloat, the two are just injected into this terrifying world full of superpowered law enforcement agents and superpowered crime syndicates that really help make this a fresh new look at the idea of superhero deconstruction and that also helps make this be one of the best and most fun graphic novels I've ever read this book is widely seen as one of the best and most innovative new graphic novels of 2015 and I really have to agree 100% with that okay next up is Apocalyptic Girl an aria for the end of times by Andrew McLean published by Dark Horse Comics now this book is a totally awesome short but sweet fun sci-fi kick in the ass that tells the tale of Arya an opera singing teen space traveler all alone on a post-apocalyptic earth type world except for her cat Jelly Beans. And Arya is on the special mission on this post-apocalyptic type world that is still at war between its strange indigenous life the blue stripes and the gray beards. This book is fast paced, in your face, and it even has really cool mechs in it. And I'd really like to see another book or two about Arya. She's such a really awesome, fun character, and I really love this universe that McLean set up with this book. Don't know if it'll ever happen, but I think it would be actually really cool if we did get a sequel to this. Okay, now let's dive into True Terror with Strange Embrace by David Hine, published in the United States by Image Comics. Now, unless you've read this book before, you've never read a graphic novel this graphic and this terrifying before. Now, told throughout three different periods in time, Strange Embrace tells the story of Alex, a very sadistic telepathic albino looking for one perfect story to tell. And Alex finds just that story with Anthony Corbo, the last of his family line. Anthony is plagued by many dark secrets of the Corbo family. Anthony, who himself has led a sad, tragic life filled with horror, only finds true release in his really odd love for African art. That is, until he is telepathically stalked and tormented by Alex in service of trying to find his one true story. Now this story does have some supernatural elements to it, but it's the true-to-life realistic parts that make this horrific macabre tale get under your skin. Hines' dark tale of society and how it looks upon sexuality may be told in the past, but it is quite relevant today. This book will shock you. This book may even disturb you but you will love it all the more for it. Alright, alright, alright. Let's switch the gears a little bit and hop on over to the One Trick Ripoff by Paul Pope. This originally ran in the pages of Dark Horse Presents and then was re-released by Horse Press and now has been re-reissued by Image Comics. And the One Trick Ripoff tells the tale of Vim and Tubby, two young lovers stuck in a city full of violence and hopelessness. They have formed a plan to rob the gang that Tubby's a part of the One Tricks and escape to try to find a life of their own. But they are not the only ones with ideas about robbing this gang or trying to get out of this town. So a perfect plan becomes a fight for survival. It really seems from the very beginning of the story that the decks are really stacked against Bim and Tubby and you wonder why they continue with their plan but you just really feel for these two kids and this story is just it's just so heartbreaking this is totally just a perfect 90s nihilistic tale it's one of the really first works of Paul Pope's that I read it's really what helped me become a really huge fan of his now me just simply calling Paul Pope a master and this book a must read is selling this way too short and would also be the understatement of the century and now on to a comedic murderous tale about a bunch of people looking for one last epic party forgetless written by Nick Spencer and art by W Scott Forbes Jorge Cahilo and Marley Zarcone, published by Image Comics. And Forgetless is this really wild roller coaster ride involving two amateur models turned hit women, a hipster YouTuber whose gimmick is putting his penis in funny places where it doesn't belong, a drugged out newscaster in a furry koala suit at the end of his rope, 
and a group of youngster tryhards whose paths all violently collide at the very last forgetless party at a very popular New York dance club. Now this is the book that made me a really huge Nick Spencer fan. I got this book after reading the first few issues of Morning Glories and after this I was all I needed. Uh, I was just a huge fan. I really hope that Nick Spencer quits wasting his time at Marvel and gets back to writing stuff like this in Bedlam. But that's just me hoping. I know Nick is just making money and I, I wish the best for him. But Nick, please come back and write stuff like this again. Okay, on to the next. Now, onto a book that has become very special to me recently Pop Gun War by Farrell Derimple. This was originally released by Dark Horse, but is being reissued by Image Comics. Pop Gun War is kind of hard to explain in a short but simple way, but here's my best attempt. This is an abstract and introspective look at the ideas of childhood and growing up, told through a wide and strange cast, but mostly through Sinclair, a kid with wings, and his little sister Emily, who is a singer of a punk band. We watch them deal with everyday stuff like bullying or being different in a very surreal and fun kind of way. This book also has a neat way of looking at fame and how the masses will just pass you by for the next talking head in a bag to come along. Farrell Darrenpole has a very neat and different way of telling a story and I, I have read this book nine times and each time I get something new out of it. I mean it's just really incredible. I don't really come across a book like this all the time and we also got a really awesome follow-up sequel to this running in the pages of Island Magazine and Image Comics now called Chain Letter. Next up onto a beautiful modern nightmare with Intersect Metamorph by Ray Fox published by Image Comics. An Intersect Metamorph is like a guided trip to the doorway of hell itself as we are just injected into this world where some unknown event has just caused every single living person in the city of Detroit to transform into something else. We take this guided journey with two characters. One is a person who once was a man but has slowly transformed into his dead girlfriend and the other is a young man whose body is reversing itself and growing anew out of his back. We're just along for the ride as we follow these two as they're chasing through the city of hell by inexplicable horrors and we just get these great descriptions of the transformations or just how people are being grown into the cityscape itself it's very horrific it's very vivid and Ray Fox has really gone out of his way to pair his stellar writing style with a very lovely very beautiful experimental art style that really reminds me of an early vertigo comics graphic novel with art by the likes of John J. Moose or like one of the more wild Dave McKean Neil Gaiman books this really is just a really stellar must read if you're a fan of experimental horror or just like looking for something new and different in horror in general now onto a sci-fi horror masterpiece that is so wild that it can only come from Japan Noise by Satomu Nihei, published in the United States by Tokyo Pop. Noise is a really awesome and well-crafted mix-up of cyberpunk sci-fi, body horror, and noir mystery. And Noise tells the story of Musabi Susono, who is a detective investigating a string of very terrifying missing children cases. When her case breaks wide open, her partner mysteriously disappears, and then Susono learns that an evil techno cult is behind it all. She finds herself in the middle of a world full of cyberpunk body horror and technological monstrosities. As she learns the curtains of the old world are being torn away to make way for a horrific and terrifying new future. Now, Noise serves as both the standalone graphic novel and as a prequel to Nihei's breakout work, Blam, and features artwork that is both magnificent and horrifying in its very heavy metal looking aesthetic. This book reads like an epic mixture of the movies Blade Runner, Seven, and Videodrome, which are all big favorites of mine. And next up we have some futuristic noir intrigue with Private Eye by Brian K. Vaughn and art by Marcos Martin, published in print by Image Comics. Now this book is quite different as it shows us a future without smartphones or the internet after an incident called the flood happened where every secret a person thought was safe online was seen by the world. Society restructured into a landscape of secret identities and masks and costumes. This story follows a hard-boiled PI who is actually only known as PI. After a new client gets murdered, he is thrown headfirst into a plot that threatens to change the very fabric of the society that he has grown to know and love. For this book, Vaughn has a lot of fun tweaking and playing around with classic noir story conventions and even uses a lot of classic noir storylines and tropes and is able to tell a fresh new tale that blends a bright and colorful future into a dark and hard-boiled story. Brian K. Vaughn's name has become a stamp of excellence for any book whose cover bears it and this story is a prime example of why. 
Okay, last but not least, we come to one of my favorite things I've ever read, Multiple Warheads, From Alphabet to Infinity by Brandon Graham, published by Image Comics. This book is just jammed packed with awesome, and even the inside covers have art and are part of the comics, and, that, and that's just really cool. I love when a creator does that. This book follows the adventures of Sexica and her boyfriend Nick, who is a werewolf, and how he became a werewolf is a very funny story that I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to read it for yourself. In Sexica and Nikolai live in this kind of really crazy imagined futuristic version of Russia and through them we learn all kinds of crazy and um, odd little things that this world of theirs has to offer. Graham has very skillfully created um, a wide cast of just all these different crazy creatures and characters that in my opinion rival Star Wars in creativity. I love this book and Brandon Graham's really crazy graffiti art style and I'm also very happy to say that there's a follow-up to this that is also running an island magazine at Image Comics right now just like the sequel to Pop Gun War. Well that's my list. I hope you liked it or even learned about a few new books from it. Thanks for watching, and feel free to tell me what you think in the comments below, or if you have suggestions or would like me to talk about a specific book. But for now, this is Johnny Alpha saying, don't stop reading.